This is a kicker kiss load four channel. It's called a smart load. Uh, basically what it's going to do, it's going to trick your radio into thinking that there's resistance on the other end. If you want to add an amplifier or something to some of the new radios, the speakers themselves have resistance built into them. And if the radio turns on and it doesn't detect the resistance at the end of it, basically the radio won't have any output. So your volume goes up and down, but there's no output actually coming out of it. So what this little guy here does is it basically tricks your um, radio into thinking that there's actually a speaker on it with some uh, resistance at the end. So what you're going to do is you're going to go from your head unit into the kicker, into your amplifier, and then into your speakers. Now today I'm working on a Ram ProMaster a City. And I've already pulled my amplifier wires down to where I want to go. Um, so I've already put my head unit back in. I might do another video on how to do that, but um, it's a really basic uh, amplifier system. So what I've done is I've ran my wires down into the back and I've got a little pocket back here that basically has a big open gap. It's not used for anything. I've got a little Rockford Fosgate amp from a motorcycle that I'm not using anymore. So I'm just gonna use this to boost my six by nines in my door a little bit. I ran my speaker wires back here. I've just got them connected together right now because I was waiting on the kicker to get here. My amplifier's already got hot wire from the battery, a ground coming from right here by the seat bolt, and a key on coming from this accessory right here. So if I take these apart and hook them into the amplifier directly, what will happen is there's no resistance coming from this amplifier to the output side. So the head unit doesn't think there's anything connected to the other end. So the head unit doesn't turn on and doesn't give you any power coming out of it. So basically we've got to do one of two things. We've got to trick it into thinking that there's a speaker in there. By using something like the kicker, you can get a 20 ohm resistor, 25 ohm resistor, put it in line also. Um, I prefer the kicker just because it's a lot easier to wire and install. It's a cleaner look, plus I can keep all my components together. But you can also tie in the factory speaker before you go into the amplifier. So on your input side, I tag mine red. You can tie a factory speaker onto both of these and use the factory speaker that's not amplified. The head unit will turn on. So you would split these off into your regular speakers and then we can come out of the amplifier into your 6x9s and your tweeters um, with the amplified side. So the factory speaker, if you touch the two connectors together, you'll notice you get about 3.5, 3.6 ohms of resistance on the speaker. So the coil inside the speaker actually creates resistance on the unit. So the head unit sends out a signal. If it doesn't detect this resistance, um, it basically will not turn on the head unit. So if we try to put an amplifier in the line, when it gets to the amplifier, there's no resistance on that amplifier before it gets converted over to a higher voltage or a higher wattage. So your head unit doesn't turn on. It thinks there's something wrong with your system. So this little guy here basically creates a resistor in between and turns on the amplifier, or turns the output of the unit on. Okay, I left my wiring long so you can kind of see what I've got going on here. Um, of course, you want to cut these off and trim them the best you can, but just for purposes of being able to see what's going on here, again, I left them long. So, again, I tag my red wire. This is from my head unit. Put it into the input side of the kicker, to the output side of the kicker, then into my amplifier, out of my amplifier, back into my door speakers. So the other thing you could do is before you hook up the kicker on the input side of it, you could actually branch off two speakers on the channel that you're doing to the front or the rear. This particular vehicle only has front speakers, so I'm gonna be using the front speakers. I could hook the factory uh, door speakers back up into these wires before it goes in the amp. Uh, so if you want to relocate speakers or add speakers, you could. And of course, I can't keep the radio on for more than a couple of seconds without getting it blocked. But as you can see, the head unit turns on now. I've got power output going to my speakers. And again, if you try to do that without that kicker or without some sort of impedance in front of the amplifier, that's why your radio won't have any output. I've got a couple other videos on this fan. I've pulled the um, head unit out before, so I'll link those in the description below if you need to know how to pull the head unit out. Um, I've also got a description on how to pull this panel. So I ran my wires from my head unit down behind the glove box under this panel, underneath the shifter, under the carpet, and out in here in case you do want to use that compartment uh, for this particular vehicle. When you're pulling the front seat out, be careful to unhook your airbag connectors. 
You should also unhook the positive terminal of your battery before you unhook the airbag uh, sensors just in case. Once I get everything tucked away in there, I'll do another little uh, quick segment here. Uh, just showing you what it looks like all tucked away. Uh, the other thing I did, again, this is an amp I had from a motorcycle left over. Uh, if you want to put a bigger amp in there, you could. Uh, I put a block on there because I am going to drop it back in that hole. The seat will be open so it will still get ventilation into there. So it's not going to be trapped in there and get hot. So there's pretty much the finished result. I've got some more uh, wire trimming to do. I left them a little bit long again just in case I want to move the amp. But uh, I did trim them up a little bit. As you can see it fits in that little compartment pretty well. I'll pop the seat back in here, drive a few days, and uh, might do a follow-up on it. But again, that's basically if you have a head unit, you try to hook up an amplifier and you get no output from your speakers. You need a resistor of some sort in the line. So you have to either put the OEM speakers back in the line before the amplifier. We've got to buy something like that kicker.